is out 56. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, The Opening Call, which you can get very easily. But on top of that, which you're going to really dig, okay, our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, is going to be doing a workshop for his subscribers. Now, the way this works, folks, okay, is that you can come over to our website. The webinar is going to be May 3rd from 4 to 5.30 in the afternoon. So you're getting an hour and a half webinar. Now, you have to be a subscriber to come into the webinar, but check it out, okay? There's, you know, this is a value beyond belief. And what you do is this. You can come over. You can subscribe to his newsletter. You subscribe to his newsletter, you get in the webinar. If for some reason the newsletter doesn't work for you, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So guess what? You'll get a great newsletter for 29 days. You're going to get a great workshop, and you're going to really understand how to ride this Chapman wave and what a market for it. So come over to our website right now. You can subscribe to his newsletter. You're going to get a great newsletter. You come into the workshop. It's Wednesday, May 3rd, 4 to 5.30. If you can't make it live, it's going to be archived on your page. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Well, it's very interesting, Tom. We're looking at a market that under other circumstances, normally we would get at this peak D in the Dow, we would get a pretty sharp uh, pullback. But what I've been talking about, I, I think I mentioned it to you last week, I think even the week before, I said, in my work, I, use, I do a lot of work intraday, uh, monthly, doesn't matter, yearly using the nine period moving average over the 14 or under the 14 period moving average. When that nine period, and I'll be discussing this in great detail in the webinar, I'll be explaining it, I'll show you the techniques. Every day I'll show the Dow chart. Let me just show you this here. This is what I give my subscribers every day. Um, I give an analysis of the market and I'm here I'm explaining there's a Dow chart on the left. It's the same Dow chart, but now I've used uh, different indicators. I've added the MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence the slow stochastic on balance volume, and here's a 120-minute chart. And what I've been explaining, I'll go back to the, to the real thing here, is that when the nine-period moving average is extremely high above the 14, it takes either an incredible U-turn, uh, like one of those Lamar Grand Prix races where there's this hairpin bent and it just fl it turns around viciously to the downside, drags the price lower, and then finally that 9 period moving average, because it's a 9-bar look-back and a 14-bar look-back. So I'd say we expect that it's going to be a process to take out the 14 period moving average. And look what we've done. From that leg D, I always in the chap wave, we're always looking for a buy signal to go to a buy mode, which means you should get at least four higher peaks for peak A, then B, then C. And then a D, that's where other things can happen. So on the 14th of April at 34,082, the Dow goes to this leg D. The next day, there's just a slightly lower high. That makes a peak D. But look what happened. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Today's the seventh day. But look at those six tiny bars. So my, I said to subscribers, either this is part of a distribution process where it takes time because the people that wanted to buy are now... Uh, they're running out of buying power, so there's still a little bit of energy to the upside. But the people that are selling are not getting that downward reaction. But one of the reasons is because this look back period of nine days says that it is so rare to just cascade from this height in the nine period moving average over the 14. It's, it's a process. So what I was looking at is the SPY, because we've been long the Dow, we've been long via the Dow Diamonds, as well as the UDOW, three times long. But I started taking off positions uh, going into that peak D high, and then we got a short position on the SPY, because the S&P was acting a little weaker than the Dow. The technicals were a little weaker. And my thinking was that if there was a turn down, the S&P would actually moved down quicker than the Dow. So we still have our core long positions from October in the Dow, but we are short the very next day after the 415.72 high on the 18th using Chapman Wave methodology techniques because you can see the MACD started turning down a little earlier. The, the stochastic has turned down quite sharply, and we've got a different kind of candle power. 
Now we've got a strong leg down. So there are techniques that I will be explaining in the webinar so that we can do them live. I do them all the time for stocks that are that we are long. I'll, I'll show one just in a moment. But I have a technique that I call the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Target Support Line. On the way up, it's, it's a green dash resistance line. The way down, it's pink dash. And I drew this in. <clears throat> This was two days ago, maybe three so, days ago. Basil, I just want to, did it, that first one, did it break yet or not break? So this, uh, you're talking about this uh, trend line? Yeah, on the left-hand side. Isn't that interesting? It's okay. right now on it. It okay. hit it exactly to the penny this okay. morning, and now it's trying to hold it. Okay. So this is my target line, and it says if that target line's taken out, then, my, then there's a low that was the gap high of the 31st of March yep. of 404.55. That'll be my target, and it should make it within within a few days. So we're looking at actually the day that I have it on left side, right side price time match to that vertical plumb line of the 18th would be to the um, 4th of May. So 4th of May, I think, is the day after my webinar. Yeah, it's the Thursday. So that's what we're looking at. So these are the techniques we use, but also... On the long side, sometimes that stochastic is so, the, I'm sorry, nine period moving average is so strong, it keeps you in the trade even longer than you thought. So I told you, I mentioned this the other day, I said Symbiotic Inc. is the stock that we're in, does robotic warehouse automation systems. And I'd drawn this in, I'd done this, all the Chapman Wave methodology, the cup formation, the Chapman Wave, yes, the inside wedge weekly chart, resistance, dash resistance is called the target resistance line. Here's my plumb line with the number of bars on the left from 28.48 on the 20, week of the 24th of June. Last year, got plummets down to 8.75. And I had done a measured move, and it said by the week of the 21st of April, it should be testing 28.48. And it did it uh, one week early. Look at that. And it's still in the leg D. And we're still long. Um, taking little bits off. Um, but look at this. Here it is at that peak D once again. And it's bumping into the resistance line. But it is, look at the nine, how strong it is. So I, you know, I, what I say to subscribers, this is a fabulous looking stock. On the next big pullback, we want to add back something that we've taken off, as well as add a, a, another position. So we are looking at individual stocks that we have in our portfolio that are holding well and that I think can bypass any market vicissitudes that we see right now. At the same time, I think you have to be very selective. And at the, and while we're looking at these different charts, I think we have to have a bigger picture. If you're looking at the QQQ, and this is a good example of something that made the, I talk about a rectangle. I'll do this on my show at 10 o'clock tomorrow, the Tiger Technician's Hour. I'll show the cup formation that goes through an arch formation and then takes out this left side low. So this says that the QQQs are not holding very well, even though we've got a Microsoft, we've got a lot of tech sector uh, re uh, earnings reports coming out this week. It's already below that low. So that says the 309 area is really critical to hold, and resistance is probably in the 316 to 317 area on the shorter term. And folks, it's very easy to get his newsletter and to get in the workshop. The workshop, okay, is going to be May 3rd, 4 to 5.30. Come over to our website. Get the newsletter. You're going to get a great newsletter. You're going to get a great workshop. Basil, you and have a great soon, night. The, Safe night. The, we look the forward to the show they, tomorrow. The sooner they get it, the sooner they start implementing you, these positions. That's right. Thank you, Tom. Same to you. Stay